Well, thank you for sticking with me all this time. I did all this study of myself. This isn't the entire work that he's done. I picked uh, important sections on this. 1947-1948 epilogue, the coming of Jewish statehood. God's chosen people. No longer his people for this these generations, but nevertheless, these are his people, and there's always a remnant within each generation of believers. Ep uh, for six years from 1939 to 1945, the Jews had been taught, caught between the evil designs of those who sought to destroy them, guess who's behind that, and the indifference of those who had no special desire to help them. America, Britain, everybody else. Six million had been murdered. Not only Jewish lives, but Jewish life had been blotted out. Traditions, possessions, culture, the nature, natural evolution of future generations of many more millions, all had been destroyed. More than one-third of the whole world, whole of world Jew Jewry, Jewry, no longer could the Jews entrust their fate to others. The Holocaust was a bitter final culmination of 2,000 years of persecution. By the winter of 1946, the arguments in favor of Jewish statehood were for the Jews of overwhelming clarity. In Palestine itself, the British remained vigilant in their search for hidden Jewish arms. Jews, Jews caught in possession of arms were arrested, imprisoned, and even flogged. Following one such flogging on 29 December 1946, the Ergon seized a British major and three ser sergeants and flogged them in retaliation. With the opening weeks of 1947, the violence increased. January 1, an Ergon group in attacking a British police post killed a policeman. That's the word and. A lot of typing on this. The British press began to urge partition and a British withdrawal. The British government was coming close to the end of both its patience and its self-confidence. Well, it kept backtracking. It could have easily defeated the Arabs. Who cares about their oil? They can go and take it. On January 1st, 1947, on a meeting of the Cabinet's Defense Committee, it was agreed that to continue this policy in Palestine in present circumstances placed the armed forces in an impossible position. Three days later, the Secretary General of the Arab League, General Azam Pasha, announced that the Arabs would vote against any partition scheme that might be put forward, and they would continue to oppose any further Jewish immigration. Such Arab hostility was well known, but on the morning of January 7th, a new factor was introduced into the Middle East discussion, which made Arab goodwill even more essential. Wow. Without, on that day, a top-secret mem memorandum was circulated. The Middle East, it stressed, was likely to provide a greater proportion of the total world increase of production than any other oil-bearing region. Went on to warn the of the grave risks involving in offending the Arabs by appearing to encourage Jewish settlement and to endorse the Jewish aspiration for a separate state. The certainty of Arab hostility to partition is so clear. Grade. The United Nations is involved. <clears throat> Britain turns the problem of Palestine over to UNSCOP. The cabinet now came to a decision which marked a turning point in the history of the British mandate. Failing an agreed settlement between Jews and Arabs, the cabinet min minute, minutes recorded, minutes, plural. Any solution of this problem would have to come from, come before the United Nations. February 14th, Bevan announced that Britain would hand the whole problem of the United Nations. On May 15th, the United Nations set up hand over. the whole problem to the United Nations. May 15th, the United Nations set up a special committee on Palestine, known popularly by its initials, UNSCOP, UNSCOP. Four of the 11 UNSCOP committee members went to Haifa to see for themselves what was happening. There, Eban wrote in his autobiography, the Exodus 1947 saga, the Jewish refugees coming from Germany aboard the ship Exodus, which were transferred to the ship Empire rival to be returned had decided not to accept banishment back to Europe to face continued and deadly persecution with docility. If anyone who wanted to know what Churchill meant by a squalid war, he would have found out by watching British soldiers using rifle butts, hose pipes, and tear gas against the survivors of the death camps. 
Men, women, and children were forcibly taken off the prison ships, locked in cages below decks, and sent out of uh, Palestine waters. Unbelievable. When the four members of UNSCOP came back to Jerusalem, Ivan recalled they were pale with shock, and he added, I could see that they were preoccupied with one point alone. If this was the only way that the British mandate could continue, it would be better not to continue it at all. They were worse than Nazis. The Empire rival was sent to Europe with the refugees, forced by British troops to disembark on the hated German soil from which they had already fled. These illegals were sent to a displaced persons camp at Poppendorf. On July 4th, David Ben-Gurion appeared before UNSCOP. An unbroken tie between our people and our land has persisted throughout all the centuries in full force. The homelessness and minority position make the Jews always dependent on the mercy of others. They are never masters of their own destiny. They are entirely defenseless when the majority of people turn against them. What happened to our people in this war is merely a climax to the uninterrupted persecution to which we have been subjected for centuries by almost all the Christian and Muslim peoples in the old world. Christians supporting Jesus Christ, a Jew, God's chosen people. They're part of this in terms of their dispensation relationship to Jews as part of the body of Christ. Christians and Jews become part of the body of Christ. They're crucifying their own brothers in Christ. The Jews that are the remnant believers. The Jews do not want to stay where they are. They want to regain their home dignity, their homeland. They want a reunion with their kin in Palestine after having lost their dearest relations. To them, the countries of their birth are a graveyard of their people. They do not wish to return there, and they cannot. Moses acted from divine inspiration. He might have brought us to the United States, and instead of the Jordan, we might have had the Mississippi. We are an ancient people with the old history, and you cannot deny your history and bring, begin afresh. From the establishment, for the establishment of the Jewish national home, Wiseman told the committee the time had come for the home to evolve. Partition would, he believed, be the best evolution in the current circumstances. I don't think so. Unscop, the liberations continued to a backward of violence, background of violence between the British and the Yergon and Stern gangs. Bitterness poisoned all hope of a return to any form of normal relations while British rule continued. UNSCOP decides upon partition. UNSCOP held its meeting on August 31st. Its majority report proposed the creation of two separate and independent states, one Arab and one Jewish, with the city of Jerusalem under international trusteeship. The Arab Higher Committee rejected the Jewish agency accepted. On 29 November 1947, the General Assembly of the United Nations voted on the UNSCOP proposals, which were accepted by 30 three votes to 13 with 10 abstentions. Britain was among those United States which obtained. Britain was among those states which abstained. All six independent Arab states voted against the plan. From the moment of the United Nations vote, Arab terrorists and armed bands attacked Jewish men, women, and children all over the country and all over the world. What kind of people are these people? Arab attacks rose in viciousness during the first four months of 1948, as Jewish, Jewish Jerusalem was besieged and its water and its water supply cut off. Israel gains statehood after Britain withdraws. Yay! The British announced that they would withdraw from Palestine altogether on May 15th. Turn your back and then go away. Many of the Arabs involved in these military acts and in the sniping and killing of Jewish civilians were regular soldiers from outside Palestine, from Syria, and even from Iraq. They hate the Jews, and they're not even from the country. During April and early May, every isolated Jewish village was subjected to massive attack. Yet they still survived. During the Arab attacks, the Jews were determined not to be driven out of their promised mini-state. In the full-scale battles that developed during April between the Arab and the Jewish armed forces, Tiberius, Haifa, Acre, Saifid, and Jaffa, Jaffa were occupied by Jewish forces between April 19th and April, May 14th, while in Jerusalem, Arab troops were driven from several suburbs. Between November 47 and May 1948, more than 4,000 Jewish soldiers and 2,000 Jewish civilians had been killed, nearly 1% of the total Jewish population. On May 15th, the day of the British withdrawal, 
drew near, four well-armed Arab armies, those of Egypt, Transjordan, Syria, and Lebanon, were massing on the southern, western, and northern borders, preparing to invade at the very moment of the British withdrawal. On the morning of May 14th, the last British High Commissioner left Jerusalem. British Britain's 30-year rule was at an end. That same afternoon in Tel Aviv, Ben-Gurion declared the independence of the Jewish state to be called the State of Israel. The coming of existence into existence of the State of Israel was opposed by every Arab state, and in the war that followed, the Jews, Israelis now, suffered considerable losses, but their state survived, forming a small but viable entity on the eastern shore of the Mediterranean. More than 550,000 Palestinian Arabs had fled from the area which became Israel. More than two-thirds of them fled to other areas of Palestine. The West Bank and the Gaza Strip, which had been allocated under the United Nations partition plan to Arab sovereignty, areas which were at once occupied by Transjordan and Egypt, transferred respectfully. It wasn't meant for them to occupy. Between 1948 and 1952, more than a half a million of Jews from Arab lands as far as apart as Morocco and the Yemen, Yemen flocked to Israel and rebuilt their lives without the stigma of second-class citizenship more than 120,000 Jews in the decade after 1967 reached Israel from the Soviet Union. Amen. Wow. And it continues on. Remember the, the, the wars that Israel won against all opposition, outnumbered, but a good army. And they out-attacked out, uh, the, uh, the, the attacks of all those armies coming from all sides. 